All right, and Alita, now we get into class Polykeet, Polykeeta. Okay, so you should know now the idea of an annelid, the segmented worms. Um, we looked at the oligochaetes, the worms with a few city, those little cleats on the bottom. Uh, now we look at the ones with poly, mini polychaeta, mini seti, mini of the little cleats. So a uh, big group, right? Much larger than the than the oligochaetes. We have now about 10,000 species, the largest class of annelid worms. Um, colorful, these are, are, are quite distinctive. Uh, these are going to be very, very distinguishable because they have these what we call peripodia, little fleshy extensions and, and again, most of these are going to be aquatic. So it's very difficult for a worm, a, an earthworm, to kind of swim effectively in the water. But what if you have little flaps, little extensions that you can wiggle back and forth? So those would help in swimming. They also help with gas exchange. Uh, but again, they are going to be utilized in the swimming motion, gas exchange, swimming motion. And they're going to have many more and many larger city. Um, so uh, they lack a clitellum. So the earthworms had that big fuse segment. These lack that segment. Uh, and they have more modifications on the head. They have little beaks. Uh, it's just a different type of worm. So we call these errant polychaetes. These are uh, polychaetes that are mobile. They swim around. And, and they, again, superficially, they, they appear as earthworms but you can see the parapodia and they would have mini city. Uh, you can see all the city on these segments. Um, there's the little beak, prostomium, that first segment. And then this beak can protrude out and, and, and basically feed and bite. And um, so it's a, again, a very different jaw structure than we see with the earthworms. So we say earthworms are harmless, not the polychaetes, right? They, they have that biting mechanism. And there's many species of what we call fireworms. And fireworm kind of takes me back to the fire sponge. Um, they're, they're not called fire sponges because of their color, their red color. They're called fire sponges because if you get the little spicules in your hand, oh, it feels like your hands are on fire. It's the same defense mechanism that we see in these polychaetes. So these CT are connected to little sort of venom glands. And if you're to handle them, the CT puncture you and then release this, uh, uh, this venom. And it's quite painful. It's not necessarily life-threatening, but it's very uncomfortable, painful, uh, causes swelling, and it's difficult to get these CT out. They're, they're, they're quite small and they break off in your skin. So... Uh, you do find uh, different types of species of fireworms. If you go to Rocky Point, Puerto Penasco, Mazatlan, the Atlantic coast, or I should say the Pacific coast on the, on the West coast, uh, you will find a lot of these. I'm not so familiar with the Atlantic species, um, but again, they are, you know, they're, they're colorful for a reason. They're advertising their, their potency there. Those are the errant forms. We have a very different type of polychaete that looks like flowers, right? They're these uh, sort of tube dwelling polychaetes. They just extend these feeding structures out and then they can retract back in their burrows. So it's a different form. It's not the errant form, it's more of a burrowing form. So there's the sort of the, the body, the worm can hide in this tube, the mouth, we extend these radials to kind of capture food, bring food into the mouth, and then they can retract back in. So it's an annelid. You see the body segments. They have a similar digestive system. So just a very different uh, ecological niche that they use. Again, a lot of words on this slide, polychaetes. Um, they live in a lot of different uh, environments, but again, they do like salt water. So we, we associate these more with oceanic habitats, uh, live under rocks where they can burrow in the sand. Um, so there's the errant forms, the ones that, that swim around, and then the sedentary forms, the ones that burrow down. 
Um, prostomium can be retractable. They can extend the jaws out. The peristomium, again, there's our chitinous jaws. And the city uh, are for protection, for traction, uh, and for defense uh, in some cases. The city are on the peripodia. Peripodia is primarily more of the respiratory organ, not necessarily the city. Uh, a common, very, very well-known species, or, or I should say genus of polychaetes is what we call nereus. Nereus is a colorful, sort of a large, you know, maybe a foot long. So it can be quite large, quite prominent. Um, I'm not going to get into all the details, but again, it's a common, well-known species of polychaete. That one, let me stop that there. And then I'll have one more discussion on the leeches.